about the uh, Kumbana demons and um, representing DV, deviant uh, precepts. I think um, some of you may, who have encountered different types of practices, um, may not find this surprising. Um, okay, let's look at the initial words. If the direction of a spiritual practice is off a tiny amount, we may seek a better birth in the heaven realm, but fall and return to the desire realm. So this is the uh, this is the um, master describes a metaphor about jumping with one feet and two feet and falling back uh, to the samsara realm. Obviously, uh, we also need to understand that uh, even these uh, yaksas, uh, they are um, uh, very powerful and high beings, and um, so for them, they live in this realm that even a moment where they live on the ground, they, it's a long period for us. So from a lifetime for a human realm, it is lifespan, even for a short moment uh, for us, uh, years maybe in, in, uh, in, a, in a lifetime. So with even thinking and bias action, we cling to confusion and cannot uh, be awakened. So even if one be um, birth, having this birth in the he uh, heaven realm or even pre-heaven, um, this will eventually fall back to the desire realm, which is obviously the heaven realm. And even below that, it will be obviously uh, the realm of delusion, realm of um, greed, and then ultimately to the realm of anger, which is the hell realm. So, so we've got to be very mindful uh, what Master uh, trying to say um, in terms of um, what we do and especially relation to our thoughts. Because uh, Master mentioned uh, two days ago, yeah, two days ago, which I unfortunately didn't have time to share very much with you um, about um, this spiritual beings being three inches uh, above your head. Uh, we always, uh, you know, in the spiritual world, a lot of things we cannot see, that some can feel, okay, and even some can actually see them. Um, obviously, um, all this uh, due to past uh, cultivation and people are able to see, either feel it or whatever. So, and this master explanation, some may seek a better birth in heaven or in the formless and the form realm, which I explained earlier, and how long can this last? And they will eventually return to the desire realm. And uh, so uh, the thing is that, so within all these different realms above us, there are different types of beings, uh, not just uh, devas, uh, but uh, devas are actually a much higher realm, but between the human realm and the devas, there's a lot of also other beings. So whilst they have um, gone to that level, and they are not in a position, although they are powerful, they are not in a position to get uh, enlightened because the deviant thinking and uh, bias actions. So Master then used the analogy of the yaksas. The yaksas are obviously, um, if you uh, recall, um, when, when a Buddha gave the uh, teachings, obviously there are the beings who will come and listen, and one of them are the yaksas, because they also want to uh, be liberated too. And um, so for us, um, these yaksas are invisible. Obviously we can't see them unless those people who have the uh, inner eye to be able uh, uh, to, see, to see them. So we got to be very, very careful. And, and because these yaksas, they're very powerful. And so people, some people are so-called mesmerized uh, by them, a charm, by the power. And um, they then get misguided. And uh, so when they get misguided, obviously then um, uh, you get deviant teachings and get deviant thinking. A, a good example um, that I've mentioned uh, to you all uh, during the time of the Buddha, that was actually that the master knew 
that Angulimala has great powers. And so he was misguided and thinking that he could attain uh, greater powers. And, and that is an example of divine, deviant practice, divine teaching, all of a sudden until he met the Buddha. And then it was then awakened uh, by the Buddha. All right, and he knew what he was uh, doing. And then he, he actually, even though uh, he was uh, misguided, but in that lifetime, he undertook to repair his karmic debts. And um, he was actually uh, enlightened to be a uh, araha. So I understand. So in all this time, and uh, as I mentioned about the five goals of Nguai, um, I'm sure you heard of Nguai. Um, and every, well, very simple now, come Chinese New Year, you go and look at your feng shui chart and will tell you which direction to face and then the five goals, seven killings and uh, whatever. So in this context, must refer to five goals as our five senses. And these are actually our five goals uh, in that context. But obviously, um, why is that the five goals? And uh, obviously, um, there, there are the, uh, especially for, for Mahayana Buddhism in China, which have a mixture of, um, because before the Buddhism came into China, there was sorry, Confucianism and Taoism. So in Taoism, um, there's actually five ghosts uh, referring to the five direction, north, south, east, west, and the center. And obviously there are different powers for each one of them, but we don't indulge uh, in all these things. And uh, obviously for feng shui purposes, the five ghosts refer to a uh, direction in which they have so-called uh, bad luck. So, but this, um, what I'm trying to say is that all these are get influenced and then also influenced by all these evil spirits, different belief, different different teachings. And um, so people uh, who are get indulged in all these things that are not very different from the yaksas. And then when they get in out and all this thing, they destroy the wisdom life and eventually damage our character. And um, so it's important to also understand that this character, if you um, just be undertake um, to live a wisdom life and I'll cultivate a good character. And that is very, very important because the whole purpose of for me, uh, the purpose of this that life practice in this particular life, is to change my character and also to, as much as possible, um, to have the virtuous uh, character. So all these uh, powerful yaksas, um, they take on a, 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 uh, an unpleasant look. And that is also a reflection of uh, so-called uh, character and the virtues that one has. So if we then have that, uh, that character, we'll look dignified. So this uh, Kambunda demons and negativity, uh, which I won't go through and some of you already shared this morning. Um, but important thing is actually Kambunda, Kambunda uh, demons. Um, you can say that, uh, I understand that is just a, uh, within the Yaksa realm. And um, so if you, uh, this is a part that I, I need to check a little bit more um, one of so some some of these yaksas uh, are demons. They're actually subdued. Some of them are subdued, and that's why if you listen, if you visit a number of these Mahayana temples, as uh, China even in Malaysia, you you find them. When you enter, there's only guardians. Uh, some of uh, some of them they, they come from that realm. Uh, they are being subdued. Okay, so just like as the Buddha has subdued the mother of the. Uh, of the uh, of the demon, so this uh, uh, so-called uh, yaksas, even the kumbuna uh, demon, uh, they are or demon king, they are being subdued and they become guardians uh, in uh, these uh, temples. So why do we need um, them to be the guardians? You know, when I uh, visit all these temples and obviously. Um, through my own inquisitive mind, I try to find out about them. Um, and um, they, they are there as garden because they have that, uh, you, need, you need this ruffle form and looks 
to guard these temples, don't we? I mean, when you look at um, uh, for ourselves, when you want to hire somebody, you want to hire somebody you look fierce, right? To guard uh, your your premises. So in much the same way, um, they they do that uh, for the temples. So if you um, the other one that you can find that is actually you can find some of these uh, um, yaksas, uh, even uh, kinaras, which are celestial courts, um, musicians, they at the Thai temples. So you actually the Thai temple you see a very fierce looking uh, solemn beat, uh, demon looking uh, guards at the Thai temples. Um, so this um, are the uh, some of these are yaksas. So the lessons learned, when we listen to the Dharma, one may realize the need to be vigilant uh, to avoid uh, having afflictions. But how long can we maintain this state? And how long can we be free of affliction? And so soon we'll be formed back to, this, to that state. So this is the part that, you know, some people who went, goes into divine teachings, and obviously, yes, they can get powers and uh, they even can even go to the heavenly realm but eventually uh, they will fall back so that's why we, um, uh, which I'll come to um, uh, later that's why we have to have this consciousness uh, in our practice uh, to be able to um, roam uh, into the mind continuum in our practice so do not get attainted tempted sorry do not get tempted by the powers um, that come uh, in uh, by people who may teach you that in certain powers. And this uh, the things that we got to be very, very uh, careful uh, in our practice. Because as you grow uh, higher, higher in your level of practice, uh, you will find that there are different other powers and beings will come to you and uh, both visible and invisible. And um, I'm just letting you uh, from, from experience as well. So you've got to be very mindful. That's why if you one as if Dan hasn't gone in this consciousness of practice, uh, it's very easy to fall prey uh, to this uh, so-called powers. So living in this world, we are filled with desire. So abiding by precept feels very difficult. So, and that's why when, and unless you grow this consciousness of practice, and conscious practice I mentioned, there are two parts to that. There's one in mindfulness, the other one is awareness. And this is the part about, the second line is a part about awareness. And this is awareness about your inner self. And you see the inner self, there are two, two so-called, if I use the, can use the word, uh, the so-called two demons, okay, inside us. One is the demon of desire. The other one is the demon of emotion. And that's where this so-called Yaksang Kumbhada dragons can influence you. Or they need to incentivize you, either your desire or emotion, even without you knowing and you think it's the right thing to do. And this is the reason why um, we have to take on a very disciplined practice. And even the word disciplined, um, I, I mean, I, I, if I can, what time is it now? Oh, it's 707, sorry. The discipline in itself uh, is a topic, is a huge topic. And uh, to take on discipline practice, um, I, for me, I think on what you call uh, co uh, commitments. Even within the commitments, there are, there are 10 aspects uh, to that. Uh, so it takes a bit of time to explain that. And the third line here is that we, as we learn the Buddha's way, you must be mindful. Um, here, obviously, Master gave, uh, gave this uh, saying, so well, enriches the house as virtue enriches the body. And it was the part I was explaining at the beginning uh, earlier that this virtue is, uh, if you undertake that, you get a dignified uh, uh, disposition that way enriches uh, the body. So therefore, we don't, then therefore, this is the part about cultivating our character. So, you know, because when you undertake those virtues, you know you have undertaken those virtues, or you can tell someone is virtuous by the character. And this is where um, the, uh, the uh, what you call that, um, the one of the fruition of the practice. So in this, uh, so the word is fruition. Fruition come uh, like uh, Master Chris, I mean, Brother Chris just said, 
that the seed is the one that grows it. So that seed will also the tree will, will, will bear fruits, and that one of the fruit is that that fruit uh, that reaches the body, which is your character. So in this desire realm that we are, we must let us uh, not let ourselves led astray by demons, and they are they are all around us. Okay, every day, wherever you may be, they are all around us. Um, so a slight deviation can cause a great divergence, and that's why I must always say you've got to be very, very mindful of this. So how do you be mindful? So, uh, you know, because we are not enlightened beings, and we have to walk straight, right, on the path. So just, um, so therefore, we, we need to uphold our vows and our precepts, and that's are meant for us to keep us straight on the path. So when so-called this so, stop jumping, the metaphor of stopping uh, the, uh, jumping will eventually will fall back. And why, you see that metaphor of jumping is that it's about gravity. So what is that gravity? That gravity is the gravity of samsara. How, so gravity of samsara, uh, because of the gravity of samsara, we cannot float up from samsara. So we need to seek liberation from enlightenment. So how do we seek uh, liberation and enlightenment with the Buddha path. So what is it that we want to, to liberate that number? First thing we need to do is to, to lose everything that we are carrying, otherwise we fall back to gravity. So we're carrying all this load of karmic seeds, and weighing these orders down in samsara. So that's why lifetime and not lifetime. We got to unload all these things so that we can float up, be liberated uh, from samsara. So in contemplation. As you travel the path back and forth, you will face the challenges of early events. And, um, uh, and, and because we're not enlightened, we will, we will come back, back and forth. And out every time we come back, we face all these early events. So we better learn how to deal with all these things and be liberated as much as possible. And all these early events that come to you can be in, in, in forms of enticement. And all these beings, uh, so-called demonic uh, beings that come to, they, they actually, um, have the ability to suck the vital essence or energy uh, from us. And so that's why we could be very mindful to guard ourselves, uh, to fall and pray to all these things. So like a deep-rooted tree that faces the law of the wind. A deep-rooted tree refers to your dharmic roots. Uh, so we caught we've, so we have to face this worldly being because of our, our karmic retribution that come to us. So we build the Dharma roots to anchor the perseverance. And so we, when we persevere, no matter what wind that blows us, we will not we'll remain steadfast, that no wind can deviate your practice or uproot your vows and commitments of your self-growth. And that's why I mentioned earlier, and this is where the, 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 the vows and the precept, the commitments, are the, this is where the discipline uh, comes from that Master was referring to. Uh, to. And it's our self-growth. What is this self-growth? Because this part we have based purely on our efforts. Um, that's the reason why those people who want to take shortcuts in the practice, they get mesmerized by the powers of the deviant, deviant practice. So we can't do that. So that's the reason why we need to be very aware of ourselves and we need to undertake a self-growth to be liberated. So on relationship, a very short one. Whether a person is nice or not, and we encounter all these people, right, with different characters. Um, some they take um, what we look, we, 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 look, we look at them, and um, some of them, oh yeah, they, they, they got a very deviant uh, character, a different unwholesome, or whatever it is. But whether a person is nice or not, it's for him to decide. And it's not for us to judge. So therefore, what we need to know is that this is about the consciousness of awareness and mindfulness. Awareness of who we are, what we do, and what our inner being. But we need to be mindful. We still do not charge. So we, therefore, we also need uh, that when it comes to beings like this, we do not agree, we do not want to create bad affinity, uh, or rather, we do not want to upset them. Okay, so we just move away, and uh, we will. Uh, then be at peace. Okay. All right, Kanan brothers and sisters. Yeah, marvelous sharing by our team again. Uh, I, I so much. Uh, yeah, for really 